In this lesson, you will learn about exponential growth and decay. Exponential functions represent a growth or a decay in the output value of y as the input value of x changes. Now, growth is associated with increasing. So if you have an exponential growth function, then the output value is increasing as the input value is changing. And then decay is associated with decreases, so in this case the output value would be decreasing as the input value changes. A relation is exponential for every time period that the rate of growth or decay is the same. The exponential function is growing or increasing if the rate of change is increasing over this period of time t. An exponential decay occurs when a quantity decreases by the same rate in each time period. And just to remind you, growth is associated with increases, whereas decay is associated with decreases. And I'm going to show you the two exponential functions that model exponential growth and exponential decay. So an exponential growth function has the form y equals a times the quantity 1 plus r to the power of t. And this is good when uh, a is greater than 0. Now let's talk about exponential decay. The exponential decay function is y equals a times the quantity 1 minus r to the power of t. And again, when a is greater than 0. So if the rate is positive, right, so where you have in this case, r represents the rate. When the rate is positive, it's being added to 1. Then you have a growth function. When the rate is negative, or when you're subtracting r away, then you have a decay function. And let me just go over what these other variables represent in the equations. y represents the output, or final amount. a represents the original amount, or the starting amount. As I've already mentioned, r represents the rate of change, or growth or decay. And lastly, t represents the time period. Now let's try and solve a problem using exponential growth and decay. The original value of an investment is $1,400, and the value increases by 9% each year. So what we want to do is we want to model this as an exponential growth function. And let's highlight the important information. We are told that the initial amount, so this is your original amount, is $1,400. And that the rate of change, or the amount that the investment changes by each year, is 9%. So the rate remains the same over a period of time. And it's going to be going up because we know that the value is increasing. So we're going to use the exponential growth function for this. And if you recall, we can model that with y equals a times the quantity 1 plus r to the power of t. Now let me just fix that r so it looks a little bit uh, separate from the plus sign. OK, now a in this equation represents the initial amount, which we know is $1,400. So let's fill that in. y is going to be the output or ending value. And that depends on the number of years that this investment goes on for. But for now, we just leave y as it is. Now we have 1 plus r. And let's talk about r. r is 9%. Now when you're working with these functions, you have to convert the percentage into a decimal. So 9% as a decimal is 0 0.09. So that means you plug in 0 0.09 for r in the equation. And we have a number of years that we don't know, which is t. So this function represents the growth in this amount. If you were given a value for t, or how long this investment goes on for, you'd be able to find how much it's worth after t years. Let's try another problem together. The population of a town is decreasing at a rate of 1% per year. In 2000, there were 1,300 people. So Let's take a look. We want to model this with an exponential growth or decay function. And before we start writing out the function, we want to know, is this exponential growth or decay? Well, we're told that the population is decreasing. And remember, decreasing is associated with decay functions. So we know we're going to be working with the exponential decay. And also, we're told that the rate remains the same. It's 1% per year. And this further justifies the fact as to why we're going to use an exponential function, right? Because exponential functions decrease or increase by the same rate per unit time or per time. 
So let's remember that the exponential decay function is given by y equals a times the quantity 1 minus r to the power of t. And this is good when a is greater than 0. <clears throat> so we have to start filling in these values. If you recall, a is the initial or original amount. Now what we're given for an original amount corresponds to the population in the year 2000. So there were 1,300 people, and that's when we're starting this decay function. So that means our original amount, or a, is 1,300. So substitute that in. We're going to keep y as is, because we're just writing the function. We don't know what the output is. And then we have 1 minus the rate. The rate is 1%. And working with exponential decay, you have to change the percent to a decimal, so that would be 0 0.01. So now substitute that value in for r, and this would be to the power of t. Now this is the exponential decay function that models the population decrease in this town. If you were given a number of years, then you could find how low the population has gone in that time. In this lesson, you've learned a little bit more about exponential decay and exponential growth. Thanks for watching.